entrevista com Carsten Brush, antigo top 40 ATP e a jogar o campeonato do mundo de veteranos. Carsten, not the way, of course, you, you would like to end this this championships. What happened? I I had problems with my elbow all week and uh, in the end I hit a serve that where I really felt something is wrong with my arm and then I couldn't finish the match. Oh, bad luck, sorry for that. Uh, you only play doubles uh, these championships. I believe even in a tip competition you play more doubles than singles. Uh, is worse, was that a reason for, for that? Yeah, the, the problem was that I had elbow problems before I got here, it, it got better. Um, but then I played one singles against Brazil where I felt my arm is not good. So I told the other guy in the team championships, you can, you have to help me out. And if I can do something for you, which means playing doubles, I will do it. And then after that, I said, I'm not ready for singles. It's just my arm is not good enough. And, uh, but I was, I was here. So I was trying to play as good as I can. And up until today, it was quite good. Nevertheless, back in Portugal, back in a special place for you. How was it for you to, to return here and to have this experience? It's great. But being in Portugal is always great. I, I have played so many events here. I've, I've uh, had great experiences. I won a doubles title here in 2002 with Andrei Olhovsky, where, uh, sorry Andrei, but I was much, much better than you. <laughs> I was playing unbelievable back then here in Portugal and, and this always reminds me and uh, and it was my last title on the tour in doubles so Portugal is always something special for me. And why? Why do you think so? Why Portugal is so special for you? I just love it. I like it here. I, I love it here. People are friendly. Uh, you, you have great food. You have great weather. There are so many things that I enjoy and, and that maybe not that many countries where I feel that well. And are you considering to, to move to Portugal for, for, for living? Are you considering uh, that? <laughs> 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 maybe. No, you never know what the future brings. <laughs> Off the record we were talking about all the times you played in Portugal and so many great places. What do you remember the most about Portugal? Of course, the special week in Estoril winning the double title, but uh, apart from that, so... Um, it's just... You played from north to south. So you <laughs> yeah, I played from north to <laughs> south. There are so many memories, there are so many uh, stories you can tell, but it's not that you, that you can point something out yeah. or not. It's just the overall experience is just, it's just, it's just phenomenal. And was that a part in uh, choosing to come here this year to play the, the World Seniors or...? Um, yeah. Or you were planning to play already? I was you, planning you to play the, the German yeah. team um, or the German Federation asked me to be to be the captain of the 50, men's 55 team and then I can more or less choose my team. It's not like in other countries where the champion has to be on the team in Germany I can choose my team and we were having such a great time last week because my team was really funny and, mm -hmm. and plus we are playing well I mean obviously you have to play well you cannot choose somebody who's yeah. really funny but yeah. <laughs> you cannot choose a comedian that's all of a sudden has to play tennis but uh, we had we had such a great time with the team um, the, the, the dinner last week was fantastic. Um, in between the team, we were having so much fun that it, it was just um, for me. When when the German Federation asked me to be the team captain, and I saw it's going to be here in Lisbon, I said, "Yeah, sure, I'm going to be there." And um, I've been here four years ago yes. um, at the World Championships, which was also good. We didn't compete that well as a team, but for example, I'm not going to Mexico City next year because it's far away <laughs> and it costs a lot of money. I mean, you cannot earn that much here. It's uh, you have to you have to 
decide if you want to do it and spend money because it's going to cost you something. But is this something you, you do quite often or are you planning to do, playing more on the Masters Tour or just from time to time? It depends on, on, the how, the body, yeah. on the body, how the body feels, you have a job back home, so uh, I'm teaching tennis okay. and, and so it's not always easy to find the time and plus, like I said, it costs money. To play on the Masters Tour, it always costs you money, you can, you, you're not going to earn anything. I mean, if you, for the team championships, you don't get anything. So everything, basically you're paying by yourself. The German Tennis Federation gives us 2,000 euros for the whole team, which means 500 euros each. You have to pay the flight, you have to pay the hotel, you have to pay the food. So at the end of the week, you're gonna lose some money. and. It's not always affordable, yeah. so. Uh, but I love playing those events. I, yeah. I love it, and if it's if it's a good place, then I like to go. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the players we have here were like amateurs in in tennis. No, they were not. They were not professionals. You were top forty. You made an ATP final, singles final, a lot of doubles titles. So, how do you find motivation to play? This kind of tournaments because I would say like you are the best one when you look about the careers of the players here you are the best one uh, for sure so how do you find motivation to play this kind of tournaments? I just love it <laughs> I love competing I love going out there having a battle men against men no matter whether they were professionals back then or now or and and the guys that were that were not professionals they are becoming more and pro more professional the older they get. And I'm, I just love playing, but I'm not professional anymore. So I'm not practicing three hours a day or not even one hour a day for myself. I just teach tennis and then I go out at the tournaments and do the best I can. So the guys that are doing it professionally, they are coming closer, but I still like to win this battle. And, and that's why I'm uh, happy to play. And when you end up winning, it's, it's such a pleasure, no matter whether those guys were professionals back then or not, but it's still always a competition between somebody and I like competing. And then you, in the end, you win, then you're happy, or you lose, and you still be happy because you the the people are nice. <laughs> and have you tried the Bundesliga as well? Because out of all the countries in Europe, Germany is one of the strongest ones in terms of. Uh, I played Bundesliga league. for um, 10, 12, 12 years, I believe. As a pro, or now that you are As a pro. retired from professional? Yeah, no, no. Now we don't have Bundesliga anymore okay. in the age group. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, it's, it's divided. No, it's divided in four regions. Okay. And then we play the, the winner of the four regions in Germany, they play for the German Championships. Okay. And uh, I won it 2008 with the team. We won it to. 2016 okay. with the team mm -hmm. and we have a good chance next year <laughs> with a new team mm -hmm. when you say you teach tennis it's a competition group no uh, so no more social I'm, I'm i'm the at a local club okay. or actually at two local clubs because there are two brothers that okay. are really friendly oh, and nice. they are the owners of the tennis school tennis academy and in that one club I'm the third coach because it's the boss of the tennis school who used to be a professional player who was ranked 220 in the world Mark Joachim he's my boss then he has one tennis coach employed and I call myself the third coach so I'm happy not not to deal with the parents yeah, because yeah, it's yeah, always I was going to ask to be more relaxed you prefer that yeah, nowadays yeah definitely Hey, I, I, don't, I don't want to get a phone call yeah. when you finished giving lessons at nine o'clock in the evening. I'm going home, be at home at ten. 
and then getting phone calls from the parents so or somebody. I'm, I, I feel well. Yeah. I feel well. <laughs> And when you play a team competition like you, you played last week, do you remember those times when you were part of the German Davis Cup team? Do you remember that? It, it's the same feeling or kind of the same feeling for you? Obviously, back then the pressure was much bigger. Oh, of course, of course. Here it's more fun. But uh, yeah, but when you go out there and uh, when we met here yeah, the first day and you go out with the national anthem and you walk across the court, uh, it, it, the it, memories came back. The, the, there are memories that are coming back, not not only from from uh, back 30 years ago, 30 years ago when when I was playing Davis Cup, also from like six years ago when when we played in Miami and we finished third with the team. That there, there are always memories, and and that's what makes it so so much fun that that are memories that are built in your in your mind and and. Uh, with a group of people that you are here with, you will never forget them. Yeah. And speaking about that, are you still in touch with Michael Stitch and Boris, of course, are you still in touch with them? No, no. no? I've, actually, with Boris I've never been in touch. Okay. He had his own group of guys around him. Michael, we had some problems. Um, <laughs> but I'm in touch with a couple of other guys okay. from which which were great players, like Patrick Kuhn, who's, uh, who was quarterfinals in Wimbledon, Bernd Karbach, who was quarterfinals years old. We, we, we are in touch, not once a month, but maybe we send each other a message every three months, four months, whatever. So there's a, still a good relationship between us, mm -hmm. if we see each other. And you are uh, the, the kind of the former player that uh, for example, the German Federation invite you for something, or the, the local tournaments invite you for, for something. Are you not that kind of former player? No, the German Federation sometimes forgets to invite former players. Former players. That's it. Would you like to be more present, to be involved in, the, for example, the new generation? Or are you, no. Are you okay with? I'm I'm okay with my I'm okay with my life. I'm okay with the German Federation. The social part of tennis nowadays in the more relaxed atmosphere without the pressure of the competition. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Pressure back back then was was great. Yeah. Because it helps you to to uh, play better. Of course. But if you're here and I mean, I, I'm really hurt now. Mm. I, I really hurt myself, and I, I believe. It's, it's something bad, but I can still sit there, have a beer, and don't think about the problems that are coming up next week. If I would be a professional right now, I would be really unhappy mm -hmm. and, uh, and, worried about and worried about not playing maybe the next six, eight weeks, maybe yeah. even more, but now... You get to enjoy a little bit more. I can I can still have two beers and not to be worried. <laughs> so I would assume you don't follow tennis so much uh, these days. I do follow tennis. I love. I I, I, I do follow tennis. I love I love yeah. tennis. I I'm, I'm a completely sports fanatic. Oh, and nice. I have a in Germany we have a couple of pay ch sports channels yes. that you have to pay for, and I pay for, I'm paying for everything. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm watching. US Open, maybe, maybe. Yes. all the tournaments. And what do you think about the German generation of players? Of, of course, Sasha is the leader, but what do you think about the generation of German players? It's tough at the moment. There are, there are not that many guys that are up in the top 100, and uh, I think it's. Um, I don't. I, I don't want to, it's tough to say, it's, I think overall the people in other countries, let's put it that way, in other countries are fighting more and working harder than the Germans. That's why we have, let's say, 75% of the women's are coming from East European countries yes. in the top 100 because they just, their life is 
maybe not that good. So they work harder to have a good life. In Germany, the life is quite good. So they don't have to work hard. And, and that makes it uh, tough to, to compete and, and to perform well. So as a fan and a former, former player, are you worried about the future, about the tennis in, in your country? not worried about the future in tennis in my country but I believe that um, it's getting tougher and tougher if, if Sasha now is out there uh, Jan Lennart Struff is not the youngest anymore and I don't see anybody uh, coming up so I'm not worried because the club tennis is still going on and, and people will play tennis But I don't think that it's going to be the case that I don't see the next gym number one in the world. Which are your favorite players to watch when you turn on the telly? Not at, from Germany. But at the from moment? Italy. Yeah. Alcaraz. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. So much fun to watch him. And, and you can see he's enjoying what he's doing. Yes. Always smiling. Always smiling, having fun, playing a drop shot, missing a shot. <laughs> having fun. He won a title there. Okay. He entered the top 100 after winning here. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. First time. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's at the moment my favorite. There are some other guys that really play well, but the way he expresses himself on, this, on a tennis court is, is something that's uh, worth to watch. And I'm, I'm happy that he just started. I, I think it's going to become a lot of fun with him. Do you think there is a player is playing kind of kind of you? You see yourself in one of the players when you watch TV? No. No? Nobody's no. like you? <laughs> Tennis has changed. Yeah. There's, you hardly see anybody playing surf and volley. Do you miss it? Yeah, I do. I do. But I think also the, the, there, were, there are a couple of stories that I heard that everybody wanted to make tennis slower to have more rallies. Yes. So I heard a story from Jim Korea where he was a commentator for the, for the American TV and he had a, had a can of balls from the old days, took them to Wimbledon and he couldn't fit the balls from Wimbledon into this camp because they are so much bigger. So the game is getting slower and slower. So the guys that are trying to play surf and volley, they don't have a chance because the balls are getting slower, the courts are getting slower, everything is getting slower. And yeah, I, I miss a little bit that Do you still try to do it, serve in volley when you play? I'm time too old. To time? I'm too old, I'm too slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, when you play serve in volley, the surface, even though they hit it with yeah. 220, but everything is coming back and, and then the volley gets tough and it's it's not easy. I I would It would be interesting to see somebody do it, especially in Wimbledon or on grass courts, what's going to happen, but it doesn't happen. So. so when you came here like three, four days ago, because four years ago you played in Portugal, but in your other club, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, we Sif. played in Sif. So, so when you arrived here three, four days ago, did the, the Sturil title came back to your memory? Oh, I won there yeah, 20 years obviously. ago. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I have so many matches in my mind. And, uh, I, I believe I, I know like 80, 90% of my matches I can still really? recall the score and, and recall the opponents. Oh, nice. That's what I said in the beginning. Sorry to Andre, but we were playing in the semi finals against Maj Bupati and Max Mierny, and we were not Great starting opponents. good. And was 1 6 0 1 down a break. and from that point on, I didn't miss one ball. That's my What memory. memory. <laughs> one six, oh one, one. six oh one oh down a break, and then we won the second set, seven five, and the match tie break, 
and then in in the finals we beat uh, we beat Simon Aspel and Mark Kretzmann, but really easy three and three, and I was I was playing so terrific. So all the, all these things come up to my mind, and the first two rounds we played against not so good doubles players, and and we struggled, and both we, actually first or second round I I'm, don't remember whether it was first or second played against Nuno Markes, oh, really? the Portuguese oh, guy. Yeah. And we, one of the best we, ever. Yeah, one of the best ever. And, and we struggled so much and ended up winning 10-8 in the match tiebreak or something. Okay. So I, by then I thought, we are not a good team on clay. And then all of a sudden I started playing unbelievable. And those memories always come up. I, and like I said, I, I know so many matches by score and opponents plus even sometimes some points from the matches that were important i can still recall them now I, i could never hit the ball that well but i had to find a way to make the opponent a little bit uh, struggle and that's why i i watched a lot of matches and knew how to make them struggle i was not the best tennis player but i was i, was, I had a good mind 20 years ago, that author. Uh, do, you, uh, do you believe that? 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Do you remember? Do you believe that? It was like, like it's been more been than. It's, it's been a lot. It's been a while since since that title. So, do you believe the time is is past, like more than 20 years? I still feel young, <laughs> even though the beer gets grey, but I still feel uh, quite young. So, I, I'm I'm happy. I can still move. Okay, the arm is not good, but. No, I, I believe that um, everything is going the way it's supposed to go. So it's all good. Perfect. Okay, perfect. That's the perfect ending. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.